Good morning, YouTube. Hopefully you all had a wonderful holiday because we did not. <laughs> you probably no. thought we were just taking a break because of Christmas or whatever. No, April was in a terrible, terrible accident. It was. And it was kind of my fault because Why I wanted to... Why is it your fault? Well, I wanted to introduce you to skiing. It's okay. a lifelong passion of mine. Ever since I could walk, my parents just put me on skis. Right. The only time I lived away from Kansas was up on this mountain that I took you to, Beaver Creek in Colorado. I was a ski bum, got mm -hmm. about nine hours of college credits out of the way and worked in a ski shop and had the time of my life. Yeah. Thought I'd share that with you. Right. And the most horrible accident ever happened <laughs> that basically I've ever seen on the mountain with somebody who has never ever skied before, but it totally yeah. wasn't her fault. No, it was my first time skiing and I was a little nervous because I've never skied, not even water skied, which I don't know if there's a correlation from skiing to water skiing. Not just really. The balance it takes to kind of stay up in the little hills and, and it's you go really fast. You can, but I was doing it the right way. So I've taught a lot of people to ski. April was the best never ever skier I've ever seen. You're just we saying went, that. No, no, it was absolutely true. We were out there with another couple that needed to learn as well. Yeah. Long time friend of April right. and her it was, boyfriend. It was actually my friend Crystal's birthday, which I mm -hmm. ruined because of this accident. Now she's Sorry, a snowboarder. Crystal. Now you're gonna see in a little bit, I'm very biased against snowboarders, so I've been skiing all my life. But yeah. she wanted to try and ski since everybody else was trying to ski. Right. So uh, I took them to the bunny slope like you're supposed to in the beginning and taught them how to do turns and they call it pizza french fry where you make the pizza that slows you down when you're learning how to ski french fry skis parallel it means you go fast and that controls you on the bunny slope but on the real slopes it doesn't control your speed all that well mm -hmm. so you really need to learn how to turn right when you're learning you do these wide s's and april was doing a great job with her wide s's crystal doing a great job uh mike the boyfriend of crystal <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. She was just pointing straight downhill, which on the bunny slope you can do, and then he was waiting for us at the bottom, wondering why we're taking so Well, some... Mike's like a massive big guy, and I guess you can't just like pizza stop your way when you're going fast and you're that big of a right. person. And so he wiped out a few times, which was kind of Well, you know, so that's fun the part I was to getting watch. to. You guys practice, you went slow, all that stuff. So by the end of the day, I felt confident taking them to the big part of the mountain, still the easy part. Right. And uh you guys did great. You were doing your turns. Mm -hmm. You weren't crashing all that hard. Mike, because he wasn't practicing, he just yard sale is what you call it, <laughs> where all your skis, all your equipment just goes everywhere. So fun. And it, you know, he had to have a trial by fire yeah. on the slope and eventually picked it up. But you guys were doing great. We were having such an amazing time. And yeah. like I said, Crystal, you're not, uh oh. Did you do it again? This is a common thing. Uh, did you do it again? I did it again. You did it. Oh. Wait, how did you do it? I'm sorry. I'm right here. No, no, <laughs> April. And Crystal were doing a great job. April was doing a great job. Crystal You're doing, doing a, a horrible great... job right now. So when the two of them we get together, I sometimes mix up their names, and, it's, and Alice turned into like a tick. <laughs> like a nervous thing now, like a nervous, nervous tick. Thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oops. Um, April, you're doing a great job. Thanks, Doug. Doug. Sorry, Doug. I mean Tyler. Okay. <laughs> hmm. All right. Back to Doug's beautiful blue eyes. All right. Brittany Blue. Oh, yeah. So we we're at the end of the run, and this is where all the slopes sort of come together, beginning, middle, advanced levels, all come into this place. They have signs mm -hmm. everywhere say, whoa, slow down, mm -hmm. don't go too fast, because it is sort of a choke point with traffic and also with different levels of skiers. Right. And April's going slow. She had just completed a turn. She's going walking pace. Very easy to predict where she's going. Right. There's no unpredictable movement there. And I'm helping Mike because also his ski bindings were set a little bit too loose, so when he would take a turn a little too aggressively, his skis would just pop out. I used to work in a ski shop, so I could help him really quick, mm -hmm. uh, but I stopped to help him. I saw April skiing down, doing a great job. I went to help Mike. The snowboarder went, <laughs> flew by me. I thought in my head, what an idiot. Clicked his ski back in, then looked down and saw the pretzel that yeah. April and the snowboarder had become on the ground, just a massive collision where the snowboarder was going way too fast, out of control, and I just, I just froze. I couldn't believe it. It was like watching a car wreck, some kind of disaster yeah. where you're just in shock for a few seconds because like, it, it just, it's unimaginable. 
He literally used me as like a brick wall that he just slammed into. That wall fell over, which is me. And then he used me as like a mattress to land on. And he was completely fine, completely unscathed. And here's what I thought was interesting is that my S turns that I was doing, mm -hmm. I actually had followed a ski instructor with maybe seven kids. These are little kids that were following them down this little part of the it's hill. It's like a school of fish because right. they'll be the instructor and then there'll be seven, <laughs> eight, ten little skiers just following and you know, like a centipede kind of thing. It's, it's yeah. really cute. And and so yeah, she was... I was just following their path. They were about three, maybe two minutes ahead of me and I was just like, okay, if these little kids can do that S, I'm going to do that S too. And I did exactly what they were doing and just out of nowhere, the snowboarder just slams right in me. Football tackles me onto the ground, just completely used me as, as his landing area. And I have never been in so much pain in my entire life. Out of everything I've done, you know, I haven't had been in any huge accidents or anything, but, but what it felt like is, I don't know if you've ever watched football, but when you see those guys get just clothesline tackle and their knee bends the wrong way or their ankle or anything bends the wrong way and they're showing the instant replays and your stomach just drops because you're like, oh, it's this, this, the joint's not supposed to go that way. In my head, that's exactly what happened. And I thought about those instant replays to as the right was knee. Happening. So you see that brace down there? Right. That's thanks to this complete and total moron. So he lands and pretty much takes out my knee, which I thought when I looked up was going to be bent the complete opposite way. She didn't look up for a while, though. She was just face down in the snow. Right. I thought she was knocked out cold because she wasn't moving. I couldn't focus. I was paralyzed in pain and I don't know if you've ever been that much in pain but nothing else could move I couldn't even move my body all I was focusing on was my breathing breathe in and out and in and out and just like kind of like those Lamaze classes mm. like if you're giving birth or something where they teach you how to breathe that's all I could focus on for a good five minutes which felt like the longest time of my life because it was in excruciating pain and I'm just focusing on breathing. Everyone's just trying to talk to me around me, see if I'm okay. I couldn't even talk because I was so much in pain. And I thought when I looked up, my knee was going to just be completely cocked to the side. And luckily it wasn't, but I do have a torn ACL stress fractures, compression fractures, and a huge, massive bone bruise. It, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was this. So it was intense. It was about the angriest I have ever been <laughs> oh, yeah, in God. my entire life so after just being paralyzed just sort of watching like oh my god processing did this actually happen i ski down there april responds to me saying mm -hmm. her leg is in pain i know exactly what's happened because it's a very common skier's injury i also saw the way they went down on top of each other and i didn't see the knee bend but i knew it was like i know what this injury is like mm -hmm. i know i immediately knew what had happened and what this idiot had just done right skiing way out of control signs everywhere saying to slow down well he wasn't skiing he was snowboarding snowboarding sorry you you, you ski as a snowboarder so right. but oh, okay yeah and here's my thing against snowboarders you have to slow down any slow down areas i don't care how good of a snowboarder you are if you're sean white you do not have the maneuverability of an average skier. Mm -hmm. Skiers can turn on a dime, they can scoot around people, you still slow down in these choke point areas, in these pressure areas, but me as a skier, I can whip around things pretty quick. A snowboarder is just not maneuverable. That's why when you see Olympic, winter Olympic sports, skiers have these slalom courses, very tight maneuverable things. Snowboarders, they don't have that, there's no point, they can't do it. They have half pipes and, and big courses right. and how cool they can jump and all that stuff because you just cannot maneuver a snowboarder. Like a racing driver driving a dump truck. Right. It, it, they're a racing driver, but it's a dump truck. They can't, they can't take a turn with it. Right. And that's what this guy was doing, except it was his second day, he said. <laughs> on the mountain. Yeah. He's by himself. He has no business going the speed that he's going. He's an athlete. Uh, we were able to exchange information, so I found a lot about this idiot. And his background, at least from what I can find in Google, is football. And there's so many things you can do when you're out of control as a skier, uh, especially if you're about to hit something. The best thing you can do is kind of lay down. Put your skis out, put your snowboarder out to where that's going first, and just dig into the ground until you stop. His reaction, I think, was similar to what a football player would do in that situation. Mm -hmm. And it was just to tackle you right. and let you take all of the impact. I did. So not only <laughs> did. does she have 
a destroyed knee yeah. from that impact of him coming in sideways. But then when she hit the mountain, her whole left side, yeah. all bruised up. Black and Neck, blue. Neck, shoulder, left side, we're like, mm -hmm. all bruised up, all ruined because this guy is an idiot going too fast, not experienced, just absolutely reckless. I would equate it to somebody driving down the road, mm -hmm. going 110 miles an hour, mm -hmm. and then getting in an accident, hurting somebody, and then going, oh, it was an accident. Well, right. you, it wouldn't have been an accident if you were doing something responsibly. Accidents are one thing. I've been in plenty of ski incidents where someone has hit me, knocked me over, you know, we're not going very fast, haha, ha, funny, or sorry, or like, watch where you're going, depending right. on the snowboarder's attitude or whatever, because I've skied a lot, I, and I've seen collisions too, I hadn't seen one like this since I was a kid. Right. I was a little, like, eight-year-old, and a snowboarder was taking a jump. In the beginner area, there were some jump areas, and we're in the ski school in that little school of fish. Mm -hmm. He hits the instructor, knocks him out. Right. And then runs off. He he took off? Took off. What? That's like hit so, and run. It was definitely, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hit and run. To his credit, the guy stayed around and we exchanged information. Uh, but, yeah, this one, he ran off. Left us a school of kids crying oh because we thought our instructor was dead. Right. You right. know, he came to eventually and he was too hurt to continue teaching us and stuff. Um, they, but the ski patrol came and took us down the mountain. But that was the biggest accident I'd seen oh, yeah. before this. And this one was was just absolutely terrible. It so was intense. I was so mad. Like, <laughs> you were so mad. I have never so mad. thought of killing someone before. I wanted to kill this person. Like, I, like, that, that red. And I'm yelling every single thing I can think of. I just, you are. I was so mad at him because it was not just an accident. It was just such stupidity. Anybody who had any kind of decent judgment would have done so many things differently mm -hmm. than going that fast and then getting in an out of control situation. They could have done so many other things mm -hmm. rather than just using her as a, well, I don't right. know. A, basically, a, uh, air cushion. Yes. Like somebody jumping off a building into that. You were yeah. you were his cushion. Right. And this the guy, young guy, early mid twenties. You got totally fine. You were very upset, and he was a little nervous. He was very scared. He's like, "Oh, I have a kid. Don't you know? Don't hurt me." I, I couldn't really hear the whole thing, but I know that the the woman that was kind of helping the situation that worked there yeah, had the ski to patrol was there separate quickly. you. The ski patrol was there quickly. <laughs> I think someone on a chairlift witnessed it. Someone on the ski patrol raided yeah. into where they were on the scene very quickly, which right. was probably a good thing. Yeah. And, but um, she was worried that and, you were going to do something and had to stand in between you because she needed yeah. to calm you down. Mike, the guy that was I was helping with the skis, our, right. our friend's boyfriend, um, he was a paramedic. So he had started attending to April and I started attending to him. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, then the uh, ski patrol came and got you right. in a toboggan. You rode on a sled on down a the sled. mountain. And this never ever skier who was doing everything right was having the time. You were having such a great time. It was fun. Yeah. The weather was perfect. Everything was perfect. Our day was ruined. Not only our day, our Christmas week. Right. So all of our plans, even this this YouTube channel, is screwed up because right. of this moron. Oh yeah. Like we weren't planning on doing everything just sitting in the studio, you know, and and talking about things. You saw in the early episodes, uh, you know, we went to Hawaii. There's all these activities we wanted to go with cameras sure. and show you all this. With this knee, she'll be able to walk. She'll be able to get around mm -hmm. and like be normal when it comes to walking and not hobbling or need a cane or a crutch yeah. or whatever. But it's slowly to, getting a little better every day. To to do any kind of physical activity, to be able to kind of go back and forth with any kind of agility, mm -hmm. weird things like walking on the beach, uh, going downstairs, you know, without grabbing a drink. like the knee that ACL you need it for stability. Mm -hmm. And she'll have to have a surgery to get that fixed. Right. Uh, right now, it's, I mean, you're hobbling around because the pain was the bone bruise and the fracture right. and all that stuff. In a week or two, she'll be fine with that and, and, and yeah. walking normally. But now we have this looming thing with the surgery. Right. We're out of pocket a lot. Because of insurance hurdles, we had to go around a little bit and pay out of pocket for things. That, that, that's not a big deal. The, the, the thing is, it's just Christmas being ruined. Well, it wasn't this... completely ruined because Tyler did take me in blue steel oh, from Kansas van. to Chicago. He drove the whole way there and back. We were there for what? 
less than two days. And I modified the van to be yeah. sort of a luxury ambulance to go see her <laughs> yeah. parents for Christmas. Yeah. We had a flight that we couldn't use because she can't curl her leg up into a seat. Even first class, that would be kind of hard to do. We would have had to use wheelchair assistance. It, it, it would have been a pain. So right. it's just easier to just drive up. Uh, same goes for uh, well, with Christmas in Kansas with my family. Right. She was in a ton of pain. She soldiered through all of it I and did a great job. I don't remember barely any conversation I had with your family because I finally had gotten pain meds because originally the doctors in Colorado, I don't think they really believed me on how much pain I was in and what happened because they would go and manipulate my knee and they're like, oh, it's intact, it's fine. And then finally when the MRI came back, they were like, oh, the, the doctor actually apologized. He's like, I'm sorry, you do have a torn ACL, you do have stress fractures, compression fractures, bone bruise, that looks really painful. So then eventually I got pain medicine, which I took at your family's Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I said anything wrong or stupid or weird, I'm sure I did, but I was completely out of it. Not yeah. in pain, but out of it. Yeah, it just it just made things so hard. And, of course, the last-minute things to get done for Christmas, it, it, there, it, it, it was just a very stressful time when it should have been a wonderful time. Right. And same, same with skiing. This is something that I wanted to do with April, hopefully for the rest of our lives, and now her very first time mm -hmm. out. And you were worried about someone running into you. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's, not, it's their responsibility of the people behind you to watch out. Right. And you were w joking about be ending up in the hospital, which I've never skied with anyone before that's ended up in the hospital. Yeah. You know, I guess I was when I was a kid, that, but I think the instructor was able to ski down the mountain yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I'd never had that happen to me in all of my years of skiing, like all my life. Right. And it happens to you on your very first time well, just because lucky, I guess. of that moron. <laughs> but, and uh, I do feel bad, like, how much... I yelled at him and how scared he seemed by what I said, mm -hmm. but I am not going to stop until there is some kind of consequence with this right. kid. Right. Well, it's and changed I'm... the next four or five months of our lives. Right. And There's... so I understand why you got so upset because you're seeing in the future of our paths completely being put off, life mm -hmm. kind of stopping and jarring. And it gives me a new appreciation for people that have been in an accident that are perhaps disabled that they really really do need help and it's just it gave me a new appreciation for that yeah that's the one thing that's very lucky that you were wearing a helmet because right. it was going to be a good head if we'd have had a head injury here oh, yeah. then that would have been a, a process yeah. your knee is fixable it's not completely shredded you'll be able to walk and, and be normal now but it, you know normal it's just something that'll have to be fixed right and uh, you know, it's 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 a thing. Well, the thing that worries me and, is if I were a child, that oh, child could be permanently damaged. If it were my kid, like if it were my 10-year-old, mm -hmm. uh, she's pretty tall now, but if it were like my 4-year-old when I'm just teaching him how to ski and he was doing that, like he could have killed him. And if he had knocked over, if he, and if he had seriously injured my kid, then God, I'd be in jail too because I would have killed him. Oh, like yeah. I was... <laughs> yeah. Anyway. It was, it was a rough time. But... So... We're all alive and we're safe and mm -hmm. back in Kansas. Yes, it's <laughs> difficult to relive in my head because you can probably see my wheels turning when I start thinking about it, how mad I get. I just need to learn a little bit of like, okay, the process is in place. We're dealing with the medical issue of it now. And I just need to learn to like, like let it go a little bit because I'm still just... Yeah. When I think about it, I just get so mad. Like, do you feel like like you need like a therapy session? No, I just uh, well, like the golf therapy. <laughs> we were talking about how I get so mad in golf. Now it's translated to just thinking about this guy. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So Jake had actually prepared some ski mm -hmm. accident clips for us, but the very yep. first one didn't come from Jake. <laughs> it came from your dad. I know. Which uh, your dad was uh, very nice in sending us this clip of something he thought was interesting, but uh, in a very dad way. He has his laptop, and he took out his phone, and he was filming it on his phone of the screen, yes. you know, and all this stuff. So, Which I'm sure my dad's not the only dad that does that. He doesn't understand no. that you can Google things and find them like through your phone or, whatever, or send a yes. link. But, but that's cool. And, you know, my dad shows me one of these type of videos but, every time I see him. Ray, thanks for the contribution on that. So yeah. this is the very first clip. I found the uh, source footage here, and then Jake's has some others. Oh no. So this is actually a few years ago. I've seen this before. I think it was in Georgia and there's some massive failure with the chairlift. So look how fast it's going and backwards. <laughs> so people are just getting spit out of Wait, this thing. It's going backwards? Yeah. Yeah, because the motor's failed and it's just naturally going with gravity down the mountain. And look what? at the people. Yep. Stop it, it just like whipped him off. Yes. And there's there's a lot more. So they're telling people to jump. They look like little yeah. rag dolls. 
Would yeah. you jump? You need beforehand? to jump rather than getting like whipped around. Oh but my gosh. I imagine the paralyzing thought of having to jump, you know. Oh, oh. Oh yeah. my gosh. Oh, now the chairs are starting to pile up. That's like a Stephen King movie nightmare yeah. right here. It's like Christine, but only chairlift. But you chair did great on the chairlift, except that one time where you <laughs> we missed, missed, missed each it. other. You were right behind you me. missed it. Yeah. That's scary mm -hmm. because you have to choose, do I want to potentially break my ankle, break my leg mm -hmm. from jumping off of this thing or take a chance at believing these people telling me to jump. All right, here's the next one, and it's a snowboarder. Ooh. I don't, I don't like snowboarders. Oh, okay, he's falling down. So he just fell. So that's a little like oh. handrailing chairlift that you can use yourself to pull up. Oh, oh no. Oh. oh no, so everybody's going up oh, this no. way holding on the handle and he's just... No way. So that's, it's icy. Let me watch that again. It's, oh. it's icy, you can tell. Oh and gosh. he's sitting down, he's trying to stop he's himself. He's trying. He's trying to avoid people. He's doing everything he can. Oh no. But, oh. see, here's oh. what I'm talking about. If this guy who hit you yeah. had just sat down, right. if he had just slid back yeah. and then slid into you, just like these people, right. you would have been. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And been fine. I'd be fine. You'd be, I mean, maybe you might have banged your you know, like right. a bruise or something like that. Yeah. But if he had done what he's you know, like, oh my God, I'm out of control, let me slide out right. and stop. Right. You would have been like these people and be like knocked around a little bit, worst case scenario, but it, yeah. it, it, it just, That's just the his worst. reaction was just so stupid what he did. Or what he didn't do. So, yeah, yeah I don't like snowboarders very much. Right. I, I'm just, just being honest. I, I don't, my sister's a snowboarder. Uh, there's, there's possible snowboarders, but I just, I guess I just have a thing. So here's what snowboarders can do. They can jump really well. Right. That's what they do in the Olympics mm -hmm. when competing like that. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! He didn't so see him. that is totally the skier's fault. Yes. So that's a dumb Oof. novice skier, mm -hmm. you know, doing their wide S's. Right. They're doing it in a jump course. Right. Which you can't do. Right at the edge of the jump. There's no way. So he that is not. It. If the snowboarder had taken that guy out and killed him, right? Not his fault. That's right. somebody just. Right. Once again, like this snowboarder that hit you, yeah. not very experienced, not knowing what they're doing. Uh, you want to go out with somebody that you know that has experience. Sure. Like this guy who's out by himself said it's mm -hmm. second time on the mountain. Uh, this person, like, what are you doing on the obstacle mm -hmm. course uh, doing your pizza french fry? Then? Stupid. Okay. Next one. <laughs> Neelix is sticking the paw Aww. under the door. So mad wanting to come in. Horny. So... Helmet cam on the GoPro, skier, mm -hmm. pretty experienced. There's a snowboarder. Oh. <gasps> exactly. <gasps> Was that me? <laughs> exactly. See, but Not quite. He, he had landed and like stayed on top of me. Right. And it was like a pretzel, like you were saying earlier. Yeah, he's hurt. He's hurt. But here, the snowboarder, once again, going way too fast. He can't turn, he can't control, like do a quick maneuver. Right. But look He's, what he did right before he hit him. Oh, yeah. So he did bend down a little bit. He did, went to sit down to kind of avoid that. Right. He didn't go and just yeah, right. grab the guy. <laughs> right. Like, he started to crouch and go down and, like, yeah. like well, that's why rough. I don't understand. That. Other than this guy had a football background, why did you just football yeah. tackler? Yeah. I, I need to get over it, obviously. The guy still looks like he's hurt, unfortunately, this gear. Oh, yeah. do you hear him? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, probably... Like, what if he got breath of air knocked out? Yeah, like him. ribs or something like that, the side, yeah. Ooh, that poor so, skier. But that's a oh. snowboarder going way too... And you see it yeah. all the time in the mountain. The snowboarder's going way, way right. too fast. There's other people on the mountain going different speeds, and they just don't have the maneuverability to... Do you to think do. that there should be... Like, I have no idea. I don't really ski. But should there be a skiing area and a snowboarding area, and they should be separate? There's some places. I don't know if there's any more, but there was, a, there was a time where snowboarders were banned from certain mountains. Yeah. And the only thing that I could probably recommend, especially with beginner snowboarders, uh, to stay away from them, like the main arteries of the mountain like the bottom mountain a lot of inexperienced skiers don't know that you can go to other areas and go up different chairlifts and things if i were to do this all over again yeah. i would have taken you from the bunny slopes to somewhere else yeah and not well, to this main yeah. busiest area of the mountain right 
um, and where a lot of the, the noobs are, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So here's the last clip, and hopefully it's not a snowboarder crashing into somebody because I don't want to keep reliving that. Mm -hmm. so they, time. They've got their hair pods in. Yeah. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. It's Rihanna. <laughs> Whoop! You see the. That's a blizzard. No, 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 no. I think it's a bear. What? Yep. What? What? Is this real? What? I think the sound effects. It. Is it fake? Eh, it might be fake. Eh, it might look. There's a bear chasing her. During a blizzard, it looks like. Right. Like whiteout conditions. So I don't think you'd be hearing. Yeah, it looks CGI to me. Mm. Let's just see the whole, the full attack. There's no way. Oh, he's not catching up to her. Like the, the GoPro would be picking up. The, the thing that killed it for me. Yeah is the noises. Oh, okay, that wouldn't pick it they up. It wouldn't be yeah. noise every time, okay. it'd just be the wind noise. <laughs> but it was a good attempt though. Right? Yeah. What about the one my dad sent? Oh, that was real. Yeah, well, did, we didn't watch it, did we? The, well, that, I did, because my, I found the original footage with the accident. You know. The, oh. So it's the same thing, see? We need to watch it from my dad. Yeah, so there's your dad's video of the same thing. Oh. I guess it's a different angle. Oh. <sighs> oh. I guess this is my dad saying, like, at least it wasn't this bad. Oh, <laughs> like, yep. it could have been worse. Because mm -hmm. it can always be worse. It can always be worse. Because that's like nightmare fuel. Out of your hands is a machine that's out of control that broke yeah. down. There's nothing you could do. I never, like, my mom one time had a clip on her jacket that got caught on the chairlift. And when she got off, it got stuck. The chair kept going. And she just was dangling for a few no. seconds in the air before the jacket finally gave. And she <gasps> fell, you know, maybe three, four feet. So it just, I mean, she was fine. But for a second, it was like, is she going to be dangling yeah. the whole way down the mountain? And <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was that was interesting. That's but really wild. I, yeah. So, so yeah. it could be worse, but it yeah. still sucks. Like. We're going to be dealing with this for a long time, and it messes up our plans for travel and, you know, taking yeah. you places and doing things mm -hmm. and, um, you know, changes our whole content strategy, unfortunately, not to mention just, just our lives. So. Yeah, yeah. But it is what it is, I suppose. It is. It's just, it's a learning. The silver lining is now I can appreciate mm -hmm. people that, you know, well, appreciate them more that have been through accidents. And it just kind of, you know, reminds you, like, you know, when you're really ill or when you're really injured, just that it's a very serious thing and don't take it lightly. Yeah. Well, I'm taking it lightly because the thing that now has her trapped in Kansas is sort of like Kathy Bates in Misery. <laughs> You know, she's now stuck. She's stuck in here having to make Good Morning YouTube with me because she can't escape. Yeah, like the snowboarder was Jake, and he's like, okay, Jake, go now. Go hit her now. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching.